There are often tensions between pastors and evangelists, yet we need to work together to accomplish our mission. How do we overcome this divide? Over the past couple of decades as a full-time evangelist, I've been privileged to work with many pastors and churches and have some great relationships. But it's very clear that this isn't always the case. What do pastors and evangelists have to say about each other? Well, I was out sharing the gospel and I ran into another evangelist giving out tracts. We got talking and I asked him what church he went to. He replied, well, I don't go to church anymore. The church has lost its way. It doesn't care about the lost, it just cares about itself. Pastors just want bums on seats and don't want to challenge anyone to take up their cross in case people leave and go down the road. Let's face it, the church doesn't care about evangelism, so I'm better off without them. It's too discouraging being there. It wasn't long before I ran into another evangelist. He at least was connected to a church, but was very negative about it. My church doesn't support me. My pastor hasn't gotten behind me. I don't get any opportunities at church to promote evangelism. I want to motivate and encourage, but I aren't even allowed to give a notice, let alone be allowed the pulpit. Well, I've found that these sorts of comments are way too common. Some evangelists don't even go to church anymore, even though they're still out witnessing, because they've become so discouraged by the tension. What's going on here? Negativity is sometimes directed at the pastors, but is that fair? Well, no, because here are some of the things I hear pastors saying. I'd love to see more outreach into the community, but unfortunately, the ones in our church that have the passion for evangelism put others off. They're too forceful and black and white. They cause more problems than it's worth. I feel judged by the evangelists for not promoting evangelism more, but sometimes so dogmatic thinking their way of evangelizing is the only way to do it, that I feel I need to protect my people from them. It's awkward. I've been burnt too many times. Evangelists come in promising the world and we sink a whole lot of money into an outreach that really seems to have very little fruit at the end of the day. I want our church to be more evangelistic, but I spend most of my time fighting fires and being pastoral towards people who have been hurt by evangelists who've offended them. We never get any real traction. It would seem that many evangelists have burnt their bridges in their local churches. Being passionate about getting the gospel into the world is commendable, but the way in which we work together with pastors and the way in which we build a team within a church is very important. If we take an aggressive, forceful approach that makes people feel guilty or maintain that our way of evangelizing is the only way to do it, then it's no surprise that we're being isolated and not getting opportunities to influence others at church. In fact, it has the opposite effect that we're wanting. Pastors are more inclined to stay clear of evangelistic initiatives in order to avoid potential problems. So whose fault is it? I think that some of the hurt felt by evangelists is justified. Sometimes churches are too inward focused, too apathetic towards the gospel, and too concerned about making their members feel good that they begin to avoid burdening them with the plight of the lost and the evangelistic mission of the church to help save people. But we need to understand that pastors have to juggle many balls. Despite what many evangelists would like, the pastor can't make outreach their sole focus. Is there a solution to the crisis? Well, yes, there is. Like a church I work with in Wellington, New Zealand, who have a healthy evangelism group, who witness and have the respect of their pastors and a normal and happy relationship with their church. Or like another group in Sydney, who meet every Friday night with their pastor's blessing, doing street witnessing and mentoring other church members who are interested in doing the same. There are models that are working. What we want to show you in this series is how you can get a healthy group like this going in your church. There are solutions to this crisis. In the next session, we're going to look at some advice from pastors and evangelists who have been successful in bridging this divide and learn from them how we can get started on a way forward. Remember, there are discussion questions that come with these videos for your group to look at. Catch you next time.